Hey TFC family, this is Pastor Sel, welcoming you to our online service. We are honored and excited that you've taken the time to be with us today. If you are new here at the Family Church, we want to know. You can text the word NEW to the number 956-904-0094 and we will send you some information to connect here at our church. We may not be able to meet physically, but we'd love to connect socially through this online platform. We want to keep you informed of what's going on here at TFC. Service is getting ready to start, but before we do that, here's what we want you to do. We're going to give you one minute to share this stream with a friend or family member, anyone you'd want to join us today. No matter the platform you're using, there is an option to share this service. You can share it right to your page or copy and send the link to someone. Take the time now to do that, and we hope you enjoy today's service.
worship him this morning. We can declare it this morning, amen. church we're going to sing this out this morning 
Believe in who God is. Believe in what his word says. Wherever you're at, would you just sing with us? Believing together that God is a way maker every time. Let's sing it out. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here.
never stop working. Come on, church, you believe this? Church, let's pray this morning. God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you that we can count on you, God, with every word that you say and every word that you speak. So, Father, right now I pray for every home and every family and every individual that's watching this right now. And I thank you in Jesus' name, God, that, you, that we send your peace, we send your comfort, we send your spirit into their homes. And I thank you, God, that no matter what's going on, that you are the one that stays true, that you are the one that stays faithful. So right now we just look to you, God. We fix our eyes on you. In Jesus' name, amen. At TFC, we have a huge heart for the next generation. And we want to minister to your entire family despite our physical distance. On our webpage, you will find updates and links to these services, along with content for our kids and student ministries. We know that this time is crucial for every member of your family, so we want to encourage and continue to build your faith in Jesus Christ. We are excited to provide these resources to you and your family. If you want to partner with us financially, there are two ways you can do that. If you want to give electronically, you can do that via the Church Center app or text the dollar amount to the number 84321. You can also mail your checks to P.O. Box 5547, McAllen, Texas, zip code 78502. Of course, you can always visit our website at tfcrgv.com slash give for all the info on how to give. Thanks again for joining us here at the Family Church, where we are all about building families and serving people. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hey, Family Church, this is Pastor David Mendoza once again joining you guys for this online service. Excited to be here once again with you guys wherever you might be joining us, whether it be through YouTube, Facebook, whatever social media platform you are joining us with. Welcome to the Family Church. We're glad you are joining us. Now, today's lesson, I'm going to be talking about a very interesting topic today, which I believe is going to speak into our life, which is going to build our faith, which is going to grow us in this season of life. And I encourage everybody at home to be open to the Holy Spirit work in their life, to be open to the work of God in their life. So if you have a piece of paper somewhere, if you have something nearby to write with, maybe take out your phone, uh, write some notes down. I truly, truly believe if we can get a hold of some of these truths, God can move in a very real and powerful way even in this season. So let's go to scripture. Uh, let's go to Luke 5, verses 33 to 38. It says this in Luke 5, 33. One day, some people said to Jesus, John the Baptist's disciples fast and pray regularly. And so do the disciples of the Pharisees. Why are your disciples always eating and drinking? 
Jesus responded, Do wedding guests fast while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But someday the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. Then Jesus gave them an illustration. He said, No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and uses it to patch an old garment. For then the new garment would be ruined, and the new patch wouldn't even match the old garment. Verse 37, and no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the new wine would burst the wineskins, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. Verse 38, new wine must be stored in new wineskins. Uh, I'd like to talk to you today out of the topic of a new thing, a new thing that God is doing in our lives. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you once again, Father, for being with us this time together here on this online platform. Father, I pray for all those gathered through whatever device they are joining us with. Father, I pray for pliable spirits, soft hearts, Father, to receive your word, to be transformed by your word, and to get to know you in a very real way because we love you for who you are. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So today I want to kind of talk about an interesting topic. I believe it's going to be a topic that will really help us, but I want to start off by asking this question. Is it easy to let go of the past? Is it easy to let go of something that perhaps you like, perhaps you're comfortable with, and move on to something new? Now, if you're anything like me, if I find a good restaurant and it looks like we're getting back to some of this ability to, jo- to come together around food, and it's going to be great. We're praying for this time as we transition into this new season. But when I'm at a restaurant, if I have something that I like, I will order it over and over and over and over again, pretty much until I'm sick of it. Uh, we'll just keep going, and, and I'm almost afraid to try something new. I want to just enjoy the meal, so I order the same thing over and over again. We're kind of funny that way. We take things that we enjoy, things that we have, and we kind of hold on to them. To try something new, for so many of us, to experience change is a challenge for us. And that's what I want to talk about today. Now, in the scripture that I went over a minute ago in Luke 5, Jesus is approached, Jesus and his disciples are approached by the religious leaders of the time. They come up to Jesus and they say, hey, look, you're doing something that we're not used to. You're behaving in a way, you and your guys are behaving in a way that we're simply not used to. We're used to seeing religion. We're used to seeing behavior a certain way, and you guys aren't doing that. So Jesus uses the opportunity to give us an illustration and give them an illustration of why it's important to move on to something new, to be able to take what you've done and adapt it to something new. Basically say it this way, uh, to get new things sometimes, and to move on to something new, we have to be able to let go of the past. And that's what I want to talk about today. So uh, real quick, before I get too deep into the concept of letting go of our past, I want to talk about the move of God in each and every single one of our lives. You who are at home right now joining us, me who, who that I am preaching to you, the work of God in our life is never static. It's always moving. The way I like to describe it to, to some people is we, we can never approach our faith as if it will be done on this earth. It will be done in our lifetime. We're never, uh, if I can say it this way, we're never fully cooked. We're always Christians in progress. We're never done. So as a result, we constantly have to be evolving, constantly we have to press into God's work, press into his presence to understand and to adapt and to grow in the ways that he's asking us to grow. Let me give you a scripture in the Old Testament, Isaiah 43, 19, talking about the time when Jesus would come. This is Old Testament before Jesus had arrived, uh, the, the word of God going out to the people saying, behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Uh, John 7, 38, Jesus himself talking about us as believers says this, anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from their heart. We serve a God who renews, who restores, who does new things, who is constantly changing us through the power of his Holy Spirit. If we're walking in faith, if we're gathering around the word, if we're worshiping together like we've done so today, his power flows through that and transforms us, renews us, restores us, makes us new, and really just has this quality to it. And I want this to be a revelation before I move on with the rest of the lesson. I want this to be a revelation to every single one of you. The work of God in your life is never quite done. 
It's constantly in motion. And that means something. That means that God is always up to something new in your life. It's always evolving. It's always growing. And as a result, we have to kind of wrap our head around that. If that's the case, if God is constantly evolving, constantly moving, constantly teaching, what are we going through in this season as a church family and as people? What is he looking to show us in this time? If his, if his work is constantly moving, what do we need to be and what do we need to have to be able to embrace that? Jesus gives the answer in the story that he shared. He shared a parable. He says, hey, this is going to look a little bit different than what you're used to. So let me give you a, an illustration. If you r- rip a garment, if you rip a piece of cloth- clothing, do you buy something new, rip that up, and patch up the old one with the new one? Who does that? That's crazy. Uh, do you take the old or the new and ruin it to fix the past is basically what he's saying. And then he says, do you take new wine and pour it in old wineskins? Now, for those of you who don't know too much about the wine, like personally, I don't know very much about it. I'm not a sommelier, by the way. That word sommelier is a fancy word for somebody who knows a lot about wine. TFC word of the day. Uh, I'm not a sommelier. I don't know a lot about wine, but wine has a quality to it. And it's pretty generic. It has a quality that when it's new, it's in motion. It, it, it's fermenting, it's expanding, it's releasing gas, it's kind of, it's not quite done. So new wine is very elastic, it moves a lot. As a result, what Jesus is saying is that if you take a new thing, which is on the move, which is on the grow, which is not quite done settling, and you pour it into an old wineskin, wineskins in biblical times were, done, were used with uh, like animal skin, it's like basically a pouch that they would put wine in. If the, the wineskin was old, it became rigid. It became kind of, uh, uh, it, it, it was inelastic. So pouring something that is growing and new into an inelastic container actually caused the wine to be ruined and the container to be ruined because it would expand, it would explode, it would, it would spill everything. Jesus is saying a very, very important truth and I want you to step into that. If the work of God is constantly in motion and he is constantly doing something new in your life and in mine, the way we receive that matters. The way we receive that, if we're inelastic, if we're stuck, if we refuse to adapt, if we just kind of hold on to the things that we're comfortable with, the new wine that God is looking to do in your life, the new thing can be spilled, can be ruined because of our inability to adapt. Because of our inability to adapt, we can lose it. So let's kind of fast forward to the circumstances we're in right now. And this is where I really want to uh, just spend a few moments with you around this. I want the Holy Spirit power of God to speak to every single one of you. Let's look at the situation we're in right now and what we're currently going through. Uh, it's, you don't have to be a sociologist to understand that this pandemic that's now been here for six, seven, eight weeks that we've kind of been living through, uh, it's going to change things. It's going to change the way we do things. It's going to change a few of our norms. It's going to kind of require us to adapt to so many different different circumstances. In the middle of this, Romans 8, uh, 28 has become a reality for so many of us. Uh, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. Everything that we're going through will build us up, will be for our good because we love God. So this is becoming a reality. When everything is kind of dark, even in the middle of that, all things work to the, toward the good of those who love Jesus. And we're experiencing that for the first time. So what have we seen? And like I said, let me, let me really pause there for a moment. What have we seen and what have we learned during this season? What, what are the lessons, what are the things that are coming out of this that you yourself are experiencing? Uh, one of them that, that's been a real, a real big thing for me is we, this has shown us what essential really is, hasn't it? Who are essential workers? Who are those people who are out there and God bless them, we pray for them, our essential workers, our medical professions, all these people that are out there serving the community in the middle of this, we learn to appreciate things that are really truly essential and things that weren't, we realize they're not that important. Uh, maybe in this time we're learning that community is very, very important. Uh, I happen to be an introvert. Those of you who know me, I, I am an introvert, but I am not that much of an introvert. I need people. Uh, community is important. That's one of the things that we're learning in the middle of this. We're learning that technology is powerful. We're learning that we can use everything at our disposal to proclaim the gospel of Jesus. And that no matter where you are, you can learn and grow in your faith. We're learning this. This is something that we've been experiencing. This is a big one for me. Listen to this one. Some of us are learning that our personal walk, our spiritual walk for ourselves and for our family unit, hear me, is our personal responsibility. 
It was never somebody else's responsibility. The church comes alongside and helps. But in this season, some of us are learning that that was always our responsibility. It's our personal responsibility to grow in our faith and to steward the growth of the faith of our family. Some of us are learning that. Some of us are learning the privilege of going to work, being able to get up in the morning, that routine that we were getting kind of tired of. Uh, these kind of things, these, these lessons of community, of work, of value, of essential things versus non-essential, of the faith that we must have for ourselves, all these lessons are there. These are all ingredients for the thing that God wants to do. These are all things that God can use to do something new, to create something beautiful in you and I. He can take all these things, grow us, adapt us, and really transform us into something beautiful. But I, and, and this is where I, I, hope to, I hope to give you a few practical things, but I really want to ask you that. Uh, if these are the ingredients that we can take, even in this pandemic, even in this situation, all things work towards the good of those who love him. If we can take all these things and apply them to our life, what is that going to do into this next season? How, how, how are we elastic enough? Are we uh, able to adapt, to take all these things and allow God to change us and transform us into whatever new thing he has for us? So I'm going to give you two big ideas. Those of you who are at home, I hope you write these down. These are two big ideas that we can kind of process together. Uh, you can kind of think through yourself that will either tell you how elastic you are or it might give you a, 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 an idea of how we can adapt and what we have to do to be able to receive the new things that God has for us. So here's big idea number one. Big idea number one is this. We celebrate the past, but we hold it loosely. We celebrate the past, but we hold it loosely. Let's go back to Isaiah 43, 19. I gave it to you a minute ago. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I want to show you that scripture again, but then I want to rewind it one more to verse 18, the one right before it. Look what verse 18 says. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. <laughs> What's it saying there? There's a new thing coming, but to receive it fully, you have to get your eyes off of the old. Isn't that interesting? Uh, the things that we've learned in the past, the way we've done community in the past, the way we've done faith in the past, we have to hold on to those loosely. I'm not saying by any means that what you've gone through in your life and the things that you've experienced, the lessons you've learned, all of a sudden are no longer valuable. What I'm saying is this. We celebrate what God has done to this day. If you're listening to me, you are blessed, you are alive, you are receiving the word of God. The past has led you to this moment. We celebrate that. We thank God for his grace and walking us through that. But we also realize that we have to hold on to it loosely because if we hold on too much to the past we will be unable to receive what God has for us now uh, Jesus really seals the deal going back to Luke 5 39 talking about the wineskins Luke gives us one more verse which is so powerful and if we can get a hold of that today there's such tremendous power in it look what it says in verse 39 of Luke 5 but no one repeat that at home no one who drinks the old wine seems to want the new wine the old is just fine, they say. In the illustration, Jesus is actually giving us the template of the person who is able to receive the new thing that God has. As we're stepping into this reopening of our society, as we're kind of cautiously going back to some of the things that we've done in the past, there's some new things available to us as believers, some new growth, some new revelation, some new transformation. And the template is those that can receive that have to actually Stop tasting the old and comparing it to what's coming. It says it very clear in Scripture. The one who drinks the old says this to the new wine, no, the old is fine. And that's a very comfortable position. It, 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 I don't need to change this. I don't need to change that. And, 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 my, and my question to you is, what if transformation is available and we have to let go of some of the way we used to do things? And not, I don't mean just like temporarily. I mean like it's done. Like, we can no longer go back to that. We can't keep on tasting of the old and saying, that was pretty good. I don't want to embrace this new thing that God has for my family, this new thing that God has for me, this new thing that God has for my career, all these different things that God can bring revelation to. Uh, we, 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 we can reject that because we're comfortable in what we had. Uh, so I want to ask you, what if God wants to change it? What if God wants to, through this new season that we're stepping in, to give us a new way to do community? What if God, you right there who are sitting there watching me right now, what if your level of community before this was not the way it needed to be and now this has given you an opportunity to do community a new way? What if this is a new way to do family? 
I have a big family, like I always say. It's been an amazing time with my kids and my wife. We've just been at home quarantined like so many of you. And what it has done is done something really cool. It's reprioritized things. It's kind of taken things that I had as priorities and put them underneath the things that the scripture says is actually the priority. And here's what I'm saying. What if God doesn't want those to switch back now that we're trying to go back to the, what, we, what we're used to? What if God doesn't want you to take that priority that was revealed to you in this quarantine, the, the, the valuable time you spend with your children, the valuable time you spent with your wife, the valuable time you gathered together around meals. These priorities that maybe were not priorities before have jumped. And then as we ease back into life, as things start to reopen or we start to think about going back to what we consider normal, we can make the mistake of jumping them back down to in, on the priority level. What if God wants that priority to stay exactly as it is, no matter what we decide to reopen? What if it's a new way of doing family? What if it's a new version of you? Uh, I, 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 this is a big reality for me. There, there, there's individuals that I believe right now are listening who this moment in time is almost like a page turning. If we're open to God's newness, if we're open to what God is doing in this season, you can be a new version of yourself. What is this new thing going to require? How will you be treating family? How will you be treating finance? How will you be treating faith? How will you be treating relationships? Uh, These things are available, and what if? That's the big question. What if God wants to transform that and make it into something completely new? To receive that, we have to be cautious of constantly going back and wanting to have the same thing, constantly comparing and saying, no, the way I was doing it before this was fine. No, the way I was doing family before this was okay. We were surviving. No, the way the, my, my, my job, my career was just consuming everything about me. Uh, that was fine. If, if we do that, we'll reject. And, our, and if God grace us in this and God have mercy on us, we can reject the very thing that God is trying to reveal to us in this season. So we celebrate the past but we hold on to it loosely. And, and let me transition that to the next big idea. And it's this. To be able to do that, to be able to transition well and to receive the new that God has for us, it's a very important truth. Big idea number two. Distinguish between restoration and transformation. To be able to distinguish and seek and ask from God transformation over restoration. Now, I'm not saying all restoration is bad, but let me kind of walk this out a little bit. When I started this conversation today, I talked about how we're opposed to losing things, you know. It's actually a psychological thing. It actually has a label. It's called loss aversion. Every single person under the sound of my voice right now, if you're alive, if you're breathing, you're part of humankind, you have this ingrained in yourself. We have this, this capacity to not want things to change, to be afraid to lose something. It's proven scientifically. If I give you a hundred dollars, which would be great. Everybody would celebrate that. We need that money right now, right? Give me that money. If you were to get a hundred dollars, you would feel it pretty well. You'd be like, yes, I gained. If you were to lose a hundred though, you would feel it even more. For some reason, we're wired to not want to lose and we're wired to really kick against it. This can transform from things like purchasing or finding money. It can even go into ideologies. If you have an idea in your head right now of what faith is, of who God is, and of what your purpose is, that has been formed over a long time. And, and, and in a moment like this, the Holy Spirit can go into your living room and start messing with that and say, maybe you're wrong. Maybe there's something else you're not looking at. And we can hold on to that ideology. We can hold on to that idea. And the very same thing, that loss aversion principle will want us to hold on to it. The Holy Spirit is trying to reveal and knock on the door of our heart and say, no, there's something new. No, but I, I, this is the way I've always thought. This is the way I've always been. And we fall back into loss aversion. So we don't want to lose. So isn't it a wonder that when something like this happens, something like what we've experienced these last six to eight weeks, when something like this happens, all of a sudden we lose a lot. We lose things. We lose routine. We lose uh, 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 performance. We lose jobs. We lose uh, uh, a priority list. We lose all these different things, and everything is kind of thrown. Isn't it a wonder that our our very first reaction, our very first need, just from in here, you want it to go back to normal. You don't want to lose it. You want it to come back. Come back, you know, I I don't want to lose it. I want to gain back what we had. I want it to be normal again. That's loss aversion in a nutshell. We lost something, and instead of thinking about what we can now gain, we're thinking about what we can do to get it back. That's why I say 
be careful of not understanding the difference between restoration and transformation. This idea can show up in our prayer life. L let me give you the example of priorities. L being with your family, kind of spending this time together has just been an absolute blessing for so many of us. And we've spent so much time with our kids. We've, we've, we've done bike trails, we've done walking, we've done family meals, we're just gathering around this time together. And I know, and my, my faith has shown me over and over again through his word, that family is a priority watching out for each other, caring for each other's faith, growing each other and, and their knowledge of God. It's just an absolute priority. Uh, for some of us, that wasn't the case. For some of us, providing for the family was a priority, the, the, the finances, or our own, uh, perhaps our own distractions were priority over family. Well, now all of a sudden that, that has been torn down and we're seeing priority for the first time. We're seeing, you know what, this isn't supposed to change. If we're not cautious, we can bend knee to God at night and say, Lord, uh, re free us from this pandemic, help us, help me get back to where I was. And with our words, we're asking him to restore something back to the way it was, when in reality, it wasn't where it was supposed to be. We're seeking restoration. And I mean, just th th this is going to be a great exercise for so many of us this week. Let's see how we pray. <laughs> Pay attention to what you're asking for. Are you asking for just getting back what you lost? Because that's a very strong impulse for us as humans. It's a very, very strong impulse to just want to gain it back. Or are we turning the page and saying, Lord, I, I would love for things to go back to normal. I would love to be able to go back to some of these things. But if I, it is not healthy for me, if it is not your will for me to regain those things that might have not been good anyway, then help me to receive transformation in your name. Help me to change from the inside out. That's the difference. One is restoring you to something. The other is transforming you into something else. We have to know the difference. We have to be able to distinguish between those two things. Proverbs 3.6 says this, Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Seek his will in all we do, and he will show us which path to take. This is like a super refined, like, message and a super refined word that I want to share in this moment. In this space, when we're seeking God, let's ask him to show us what comes next. Let's not ask him automatically to give us back what we lost. Because that might not be the plan. And that might not be what's best for your family. And that might not be what's best for you. If you gain back, and this is a very specific word for some of you. I can feel the power of the Holy Spirit even in this space right here. This is a very specific word for somebody listening right now. What if what you had was leading you on the path that God didn't want for you? What if you were headed on a path of destruction, as Scripture says? And here we are in the middle of a pandemic crying out to God, asking him to give it back to us. What kind of father would that be? What kind of father would give back that which causes damage to those that he loves? To move forward and to accept the newness of what God has. We have to remember the past and how he has led us and celebrate that. By all means, I'm like that. I look back a lot. I celebrate what God has done in my life. I hold it loosely though because things change. And then in the middle of change, the pause. And this, is, this might be that moment at home. That's why I wanted you to write some of this down. And this moment, honestly, let's do a little exercise together. Let's open up our hands right where you are. Uh, I always play around with the congregation. I say when I'm talking, don't do this, right? Because we can kind of do, get this defensive thing of not doing that. Even if you're at home, let, palms up, palms up. Right there where you're at, in, in, in a sign of faith. What do I need to be and what am I supposed to be transformed in right now? Not restored. Transformed. Because the new wine that God is doing, oh man, and the thing he wants to do in your life, that thing that will lead you into the future, that thing that will change your family, that thing that will, you're, you're going to be a, such a different version of yourself. The things that will lead you into this unknown, fully holding on to God's promises, that very thing is coming into your life. It might be around the corner. God is making it available through his revelation in this season. And we have to be open-handed to say, I don't need to have what I, I don't need to get back what I lost. I need to receive what you have for me now. That ability is what I'm praying for today. I, I, I want it to show up in our prayer life and right where you're at with open hands, that's what I want to do. I want your prayer life this week to reflect that. It's almost just like adding a little a comma at, your end, at, at the end of your sentence. And, and I gave it to you a minute ago, but let me say it again. Lord, 
Can you help us get out of this? Can you help our healthcare workers? Can you bring an end to some of this pain? Can you do all these things? Comma, but in those areas that I will not go back to what it was, how do I get transformed in your name? It's that little comma to say, I don't need everything to go back. What I need is to listen to your will. What I need is to hear your voice and be who I'm supposed to be now for me, for my family, for my church, and for every aspect that you have in control because God knows this about each and every single one of us. He has us in his hand. He walks us through this. And in this season, that's what we're going to need. Fresh wine requires a fresh wineskin. And we're asking, by not holding on to the past and by asking for transformation, to become that new wineskin that we might receive all that God has for us. So I want to just encourage you as I wrap this service up and, and as I wrap this time together, really press into that time. And I want to just encourage you on something. You know, this idea of what I'm sharing today about uh, a new garment not being used for an old garment, a new wine not being used with an old wineskin, uh, transformation, not just going back to the same. Uh, this concept is something that we embrace openly in so many areas of our life. I mean, if, if, I don't know your situation there at home, tuning in there on your phone. I don't know your situation, but I can tell you Life is like that. You've grown into different seasons of life where you've had to just kind of let go of what you were, let go of certain things in your past and move on. Uh, practically, it looks like, you know, when you were a single young buck and you were, you know, maybe not married and you were just about you, uh, you had a certain priority list. You had a certain understanding of life. You had a certain thing that you wanted. Well, all of a sudden, God gave you the opportunity to, you convince somebody to marry you. You kind of tricked them into it and now you're married and now you have kids. Well, That's a transition point. It should be, right? We all understand that. You can't behave as if you're single when you're married. You can't behave as if you have no responsibilities when you have children. It happens with your schooling. When you get out of school, you've just been studying for so long, and all of a sudden you get a real job. You have to adapt to the workplace. You can't behave as if you have no responsibilities now that you have a full-time job, now that you're starting a career. These kind of transition points are everywhere in our life. They're scattered everywhere. But as I was preparing this message for today, I feel that sometimes these kind of transition points, these endings and beginnings that define our life, our physical life, we think it doesn't apply to our spiritual life. We take God and, and, we, apply, and we apply him to our life now and we think that that's the way he'll always be. We'll always do service the same way. I will always treat my children the same way. I will always behave the same way. And we take the God of the universe and we make him small. And we say, no, it'll always be this way. Without transition, I just need to go back to what I had. And what I'm saying is that our spiritual life evolves and grows because God is way too big for that. God loves each and every single one of us. It's that that Christianese phrase that we use a lot. He loves us right where we are, but he loves us too much to leave us there. And that's who he is. He'll walk, he'll work, and and I'm, I'm encouraging everybody listening in today to embrace that newness and ending of the spiritual life. Could it be possible that right now today on this day as you've been listening in, there is a transition point that you stepped into? A change. Something ending. Not badly. We celebrate it. We're glad by God's grace that you've come this far. That he's graced your marriage this far. That he's graced you this far. That he's graced your faith. But in this moment, could it be possible that he just wipes the slate clean and says, yeah, I did all that. Hold on to that loosely. Because you're going to need to adapt to what I'm doing now. What does that reality look like for each and every single one of you? As a pastor, my heart goes out to our entire congregation. I can't wait to see what that looks like. I'm I'm walking it out on a personal level. I pray that every single one of you walk it out as we walk in relationship with God. Not holding on to the old not comparing the new to the old and saying, I wish I could go back to this, I wish I could go back to that, but holding everything loosely and saying, Lord, we will follow where you lead, we will do what you ask, we will stretch, we will pull, we will do whatever we need to adapt to your will in this time. And I want to pray with you guys for that today. So let me do a quick prayer everywhere, everywhere you are, right there in front of your screen, in front of your home, maybe you have your family with you. What an awesome opportunity to gather them together as God's word is being shared, as God speaks. And let me pray for every single one of you. Father God, we thank you for this time together. Father, we thank you for every individual under the sound of my voice. I thank you for families represented in their living rooms, on their devices, wherever they might be, Father God, through the power of technology, through the power of your Holy Spirit, Father God. We welcome you into this space, Father. Father, you speak to every person, Father God. You reveal to every person the ending, the past thing, the thing that must be let go. 
And although we do not understand what comes next, although we might be confused as to the direction or the future, Scripture speaks again and again to your character. You are a father, you are a pastor who leads us, and we seek your direction, Father God. Father, I pray that you speak to every head of house, Father God, in this moment. The things that be revealed to them in this season, the understandings, the things that maybe they lacked, the priorities that were all out of whack. Father, your grace in this moment, Father, over the head of house, over the single moms, over the people that have others in their care. Wisdom, Father, courage to embrace this new thing. We don't seek all restoration in this moment, Father God. We seek transformation that we might walk in your ways into this uncertain future, Father. We love you for who you are, and in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen. Now, I also want to give an opportunity for anybody who's joining us online. I never want to wrap up a service without doing so. Everything that I shared, even in the language that I'm sharing, you pick it up, Father, uh, Pastor, Guide. Everything that I've shared requires something of us as well. It requires us to trust and obey God. And there's people right now who are listening to me as I've been sharing this who hear the voice of God and want to press into his direction, but you've never made that decision to follow God personally. You've never made that decision. This is one of those things that when this room is full, I can kind of say, raise your hand and do this. But I want to be clear. If you're listening and you have never made that personal decision for yourself, you've never made the decision to follow Jesus, make him the Lord of your life and give your life over to him. That is something we cannot do in a group anyway. That has to be done individually. So if that's you and you're listening in and and, and you feel the need to accept Jesus Christ for the very first time as your Lord and Savior, or in the past, maybe you have, maybe you were younger, you accepted Jesus when life was simpler, life got hard and you've walked away, and this message through the power of the Holy Spirit, you feel the need to come back. God is pulling you on to himself and his grace and love. If that's you, accepting him for the first time or coming back to him, I want to pray a prayer with you. And I want everybody at home to join us. We used to do this when we used to gather, and when we gather again, we'll probably do it again. But we pray together because I don't want anybody praying alone. Where you're at, we're going to pray with you. And, and if that's you, I want you to repeat this prayer. Make this prayer your own. There's nothing magical here. There's no secret words. It's just me giving voice to what God is doing in your heart. Because the scripture tells us if we believe in our heart and then we confess it with our lips, God will save us. So repeat after me. Father God, Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you that he died for me. At this moment, I ask that you come into my heart and that you save me. Wash all my sins away. Make me brand new. I receive you as my Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus. I thank you that because of my confession, I am forgiven. You live in me and heaven is my eternal home. I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We love you guys. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. We pray you have a prosperous week. Press into God's direction. And I know that I know that he will continue to show himself faithful. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time. We want to thank you once again for joining us today. If you are in need of prayer, you can text the word prayer to the number 956-904-0094. We want to know your needs so that together we can lift them up to God and stand in agreement with you. These services are staying right here on our page. So after we end service today, share it with a friend. Maybe they couldn't join us live as we premiered this, but they may have time later to be encouraged in worship and in the word. As always, stay tuned to all of our social media platforms for the latest updates and encouragement throughout the week. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to seeing you once again here at the Family Church. God bless you all.